Amina Mohammed. Join the meeting. Join the meeting.
Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Paul Laverne, and I am the Vice President of Academic Affairs here at Warren College. I'd like to welcome all of you to our commencement exercise and ask that you put your Zoom settings onto speaker view. It is now my pleasure to introduce our president, Dr. Sharon B. DeVivo. Good afternoon and welcome, graduating students, family, board of trustees, staff, and friends. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the Vaughn College 2021 virtual commencement ceremony to be followed, I promise, by an in-person event as soon as it is safe to do so. We have a few requests of our graduating students during the ceremony. I will ask for you to contribute to the chat at the bottom of the screen. The first time will be to thank those faculty members who provided you with the knowledge that led you to today. The second request will be to provide the names of the family and friends who supported you in achieving your degree. Everyone else in attendance is invited to contribute your congratulations to the chat as we move through the ceremony. We're also recording this and plan to have a copy on our website. Finally, I hope our graduates are wearing their cap and gown. Please make sure that your tassel is on the right side. And at the end of the ceremony, I will ask you to move your tassel and toss your cap. So please be sure you are ready when I cue you. Also at the end of the ceremony, we will unmute everyone, and then you can feel free to applaud and celebrate our graduates. The achievement of a degree is a significant milestone and one that you should be so proud that you achieved, especially in the midst of a pandemic. The entire Vaughn community celebrates you today and wants you to know that we intend to continue to support you as men mentors and professional advisors. In particular, I would like to thank the faculty of Vaughn College who are an integral part of your successful journey to this day. I know that many of them are on this virtual event sending you their best wishes and invite graduates to recognize them in the chat at the bottom of the screen. There are several seniors who made significant contributions who are also graduating today. Join the meeting. Many were recognized on Wednesday, May 12th at the virtual honor ceremony. And we thank you for your investment in this community, whether it was through clubs, activities, the Aviation Development Council's Leadership Academy, as an honor student or a veteran, we know you will make us proud as you move forward. To all of our graduates, your accomplishments are forever linked to the success of Vaughn, and our success provides you with a strong foundation from which to propel forward into a successful career and further education. This special ceremony in which we are participating testifies that you have completed a rigorous course of study that supports the purpose of this college. You have been challenged and tested and you have prevailed. Today you become college graduates. We, as are your families, are so proud of your accomplishments and look forward to your successes. I encourage you to take time today to appreciate this incredible milestone on this gorgeous day and celebrate your triumph. Congratulations to all of our graduates. Enjoy your achievement. It is my privilege to welcome our chair of the Board of Trustees, Mr. Ken Stauffer, who is the former chief executive officer and co-founder of Technology Assurance Labs, and most importantly, a 1983 Vaughn alumnus. In October, he will complete his term as chair, and it has been my honor to work closely with him, especially during the pandemic. Ken is truly an exceptional leader. He's entrepreneurial, 
always ready to consider a new path, as well as supportive and collegiate. And for the last three years, he has been truly inspirational. Thank you, Ken, for your contributions and dedication to this institution and to me. Thankfully, he's not going anywhere. And I look forward to his continued work on the board. Please welcome Mr. Ken. Thank you, Sharon. It's mutual. <laughs> Hello, everyone. First of all, I'd like to say hi to my wife, Carol, if she's watching. Hi, Carol. Uh, and joining me today are a very special group of individuals who contributed their time throughout the year to support the vision and the mission of Vaughn College. They are called the Vaughn College Board of Trustees. It is my honor and my privilege to work with each of them. They include Vice Chair Oswin Moore, Treasurer Mary Ward Callan, Secretary Peter Vaughn, who was just elected chair of the board, Audit Committee Chair Lisa Scully Laponis, who was just elected secretary of the board, Frank Rosenberg, Dr. Joseph Warner, Doug Izara, Catherine Posner, Rod Randall, Barry Eccleston, and Patty Clark. I would also like to take this time to particularly thank Dr. Joseph Warner, a 1957 alumnus, and Frank Rosenberg, who has served on the board since 1989 for their efforts as members of the board. Together, they have collectively provided nearly 60 years in dedicated effort in serving the students and graduates of this institution. We are deeply indebted to them for this commitment to the mission of this institution and welcome their continued engagement in the life of the college as trustee emeriti. On behalf of all the trustees, I wish you my heartfelt congratulations on your important achievements. And I look forward to congratulating you. We can celebrate together in person. Best wishes to all of you as you take your next step in your journey. Good luck. That's this hitting the podium. Mr. Castron Paul Devisahayam is graduating today with, with honors. At an, our convocation ceremony, he was recognized with Vaughn's highest honor, the Board of Trustees Award. He's graduating today with a Bachelor of Science in Mechatronic Engineering. Cash, we invite you to address this distinguished. Good afternoon to the Vaughn College President, faculty, administrators, board of trustees, staff, and my fellow graduates. I'm truly honored to be given this opportunity to represent the class of 2021. First, a disclaimer though. Graduation speeches are generally filled with a lot of jokes, but I don't know if you should expect any from me. <laughs> Cause like doctor said, my major is engineering. <laughs> I guess that explains it, but uh, maybe that was a joke. And I'm sorry if they didn't work for you. <laughs> and I do not wish this address to be filled with a lot of personal anecdotes, but something that every one of you can relate to and even meditate to, but please don't fall asleep. <laughs> and as I move forward, I would like to take a moment to thank a few people, and I have a list of them. It's a very short one, trust me. But ooh, ooh. I honestly don't know where to start. But on a more serious note, we have come this far and are able to celebrate our success, mainly because people believed in ourselves when we had no courage. It is important to take a moment to thank those who have supported and encouraged us, our family, our supporters, and the Vaughn community. I would like to first thank the custodians 
who keep our Vaughn College campus clean. They hold doors open for us, even without us asking. They smile at us and unknowingly brighten up our days and inspire us to do the same thing. And I will also like to thank the security department and the admissions who clearly guided us in our freshman year when most of us were fresh out of high school and were lost half the time. Additionally, to the financial aid office, students accounts and the registrar's office who are always available to help us get our accounts settled. And all of the departments and the backbone of the college that help run the campus super efficiently. And now it is time to thank those individuals who make us answer all the questions on exam by saying, I might consider giving project credit. Project credit is everything. Let me tell you that. <laughs> and they stay late with us until we complete our labs. And they even adjusted to this whole virtual setting as quickly as possible in this unprecedented time, just to make sure that we get the knowledge and skills. Join the meeting. Yes, the faculty and the instructors at Vaughn. I would like to mention a few quotes and thank our instructors for inspiring us. First, thank you, Dr. He, for building, for building confidence by saying, hmm, can you guys do that? A small pause. I trust you, yeah, you can do that, during our mechatronic um, labs. And Dr. Yankee for making us realize the importance of knowing exactly what to do. Thanks to Professor Saipek for showing us that engineers can actually be funny. I'm not saying, or I'm not claiming I'm funny, but he is. I mean, he's an engineer I know who is funny, so I guess the logic makes sense to you too. And thanks to Dr. Adabo for making us learn about the history of physics. Thanks to Dr. Amir for making a mechatronic student like me fall in love with the mechanics of flight engines. A very special thanks to three of my favorite instructors who had taught me to always stay positive as a proton. First, Dr. Laverne, by telling us, just say yes when you're hesitant, and that actually helps. Thank you very much for that. Second, Professor Jemison, for giving us super complicated calculus problem and calling them beautiful things. I'm like, I don't know about you, but I see a contradiction there. Complex calculus problem are beautiful things. Or maybe that's his way of saying, just look at life like that. There's gonna be a lot of problems, but try to see the beauty of it. And the classical one, Dr. Rahimi's, the future is bright. I don't know why, I just love this quote so much and that's still on my Instagram bio. It's just beautiful. And thank you very much for inspiring us. And yes, I just quoted all my professors, right? That's technical writing 101. And it's always a good idea to cite your resources. Speaking of resources, I would like to give a big shout out to the Career Services Office and a very heartfelt thank you to Sandra Ramos for providing us the necessary resources to stand out at every career related event and mainly for responding to our emails even at midnight and helping us find opportunities when most of us lost our internships last summer due to the pandemic. Thank you for your service. And now as a result, a lot of us either have internships or full-time offers. Likewise, a big shout out to the professional organizations at Vaughn, namely my chef family, Society of, oh, oh wrong side, Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, National Society of Black Engineers, and clubs like robotics, UAV, and research programs like CSTEP. Thank you so much for creating opportunities for the students at Vaughn to gain experiences network, learn to give back to the community, and have fun, especially at the conferences. Speaking of conferences, though, I'm really going to miss them. Well, it's not really the conferences that I'm going to miss. It's the free flight I'm going to miss. <laughs> the free hotels, Airbnb, and the free food. But I guess I should take this moment to thank every individual and the Vaughn community as a whole for making sure that every single member of this organization got this opportunity. 
And thanks to my friends from other majors I met in my arts and humanities classes. Thank you for your ideas, your thoughts, and thanks for helping me shape my character. And now I wanna thank the cool set of engineers and MIT students. If you're watching, it's your time to record it because I'm gonna say something super nice about you guys. The MIT students or the mechanical, ooh, the camera is taking a pan. Ah, I see it. Hold on. Start it. I'm still here. I just gave a little more time for the MIT students so they could get their phones ready. <laughs> <laughs> So I hope they're ready. So thank you so much for this cool set of engineers, MET, or well, that's how they like to call themselves. It's the mechanical engineering electrical students. Uh, I'm sorry, mechanical engineering technology students. Um, thank you so much for making the last four years fun and memorable. And now a special thanks to my mechatronic friends, Samia, Aaron, and Timothy, who we like to call as Tim, and my best electrical engineering buddy, Dino Jordan, for teaching me so many things and inspiring me and helping me stand here and address you guys. And a special thanks to Sarah, Aline, and the members of Vaughn who successfully coordinated the ceremony during this unprecedented time. And thanks to Peter, Neil, and, this, and their whole technical team for making it possible today. I apologize for not mentioning everyone's name here, but please do know that we are grateful and we value everyone's contribution to the growth of our college. As I'm about to conclude, please let me take the liberty to thank my family, my dad, who is right there, and my mom, I don't know where she went, but I know for sure she's tearing up already. Thank you so much for being there for me always and knowing exactly when to make tea. And of course, she taught me the art of making tea and as a result, I'm a pro. If you guys have any questions, just reach out to me at my Vaughn email. I feel like it's time I should put that on my resume too. I'm a good expert. Hmm. And also a special thanks to my twin brother for treating me like an elder brother, though I'm just only one minute older than him. <laughs> well, I wish he actually treated me like that. He treats me like that only when he needs help, but thank you, brother. Um, you're the best friend I could ever ask for. So <laughs> thanks for being there. <laughs> And now I'm going to transition into an inspirational mode. I hope you guys are ready. Let me please conclude by saying that we, the class of 2021, are a great example of resilience. Even after facing so many challenges, we were so determined about what we wanted to achieve. And as a reward, we are all graduating during a pandemic, a time that's filled with uncertainty. That just shows we can be successful at anything we throw our hearts and souls into. May we continue to throw our hearts and souls into making this world a much better place, a place with grateful and joyful human beings. At last, please do not forget to thank yourselves for believing in yourselves and putting in all the hard work. And yes, like Snoop Dogg, the famous rapper once said, last but not least, I wanna thank me. <laughs> I want to thank me <laughs> for believing in me and for doing all this hard work. Now, with fond memories of Vaughn College, let us use our education to be great. Thank you.
Thank you, Cash. That was awesome. Um, probably one of the funniest and best student speeches I've heard. No offense to any of our past speakers, but that was great. Um, we wish you every success in your new position as a systems engineer at Raytheon. We're incredibly proud of you as our, I'm sure your family. And um, just thank you for all your service to this institution. We'd now like to share a very special video message for the class of 2021 from Acting Chief Operating Officer and Director of Aviation at the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, Mr. Huntley A. Lawrence. Good morning, faculty, family, friends, students, and graduates. I'm honored to be here with you today as you close one significant chapter of your lives and embark on the next filled with many unknowns. The first thing that I'm going to ask our graduates to do is to remember to thank God, your family, friends, and professors who helped you get here today. Success is a team sport. Always remember to say thank you to those individuals the team who got you here. So when I thought about what I would say to you today, the first thing that I asked myself was, looking back, what was it that I needed to hear when I sat right where you are now? And then I realized any answer that I had didn't apply because the world we live in today is not the one I lived in when I sat where you are many years ago. And graduates, you can share that statement in a respectable way with your parents. <laughs> so I asked myself that very same question, applying today's circumstances, a pandemic, a pandemic for me that was an unrelatable historical fact. And now here we are in the midst of one. Family, friends, and loved ones affected by COVID-19 and limits on doing the things that we, you, and I have come to enjoy and can, and can no longer take for granted. Like just going out with friends to hang out for food and drinks. We've seen a political season like no other. I mean, really, a polarized country, hate crimes that have triggered a volcanic eruption of centuries old racial injustices, and just overall racism and hate. All of this leading to a global mental and physical health crisis. It's a lot to take in. But my friends, you have made it to this point. So congratulations. Graduates, what do you do from here? What's next for you? What's next for us? What if I told you that no matter where you were born, where you started, where you came from, and how much money you owe, you have the opportunity to forge your own path, a new path, a better path that starts with a college degree you just earned. And of course, the people you've, you've got supporting you. So some of you have job officer, offers or job interviews lined up Others are going to the military or grad school, and some may still be undecided. Regardless of your immediate outlook, the most important personal commodity you have is your talent. Let me just say it again. The most important commodity you have, individuals, graduates, is your talent. Let me give you something to think about. Employers, investors, venture capitalists, those people who can get you in the door, are very similar to scouts, like those scouts who represent the top sports teams across the world. Think of your favorite sports franchise, and each one of them have got some of the top talent scouts. What are they looking for? Top talent, great players, and in business, great ideas. You see, a college degree is the ticket for being in the game. Talent and the way you showcase your talent is what matters to scouts, those investors and venture capitalists. You see it every day, but you may not notice it. So what does that mean? It means that you have always got to work on improving your talent. In sports, that comes from practice. In medicine, that comes from research, working with best-in-class peers. And in the real world, in business, that comes from training and a continuous focus on improvement and sharpening your skills. But to start in terms of working on your talent and to be successful, we really have to focus on removing hate from our hearts and minds. 
hate manifests itself in many ways, including jealousy, mistruths, gossip and bias, discrimination. Folks, hate is cancerous and blocks our potential because when we hate, it poisons our outlook on everything. We focus on the faults of others without working to create a stronger collective, without working to create a stronger us, a stronger we. Recognize the talent that you have. Sharpen it and use it to make others better. Ask yourself the tough questions. Are you focused on what you don't have or what you do have? Are you focused on preparing yourself for the future, both immediate and distance, by saving money, practicing self-compassion, feeding your mind and body in every healthy way possible? Are you focused on events and people that you cannot control? Are you educating yourself in current events so you can make informed decisions or are you focused on propaganda that's clouding your judgment? Very simply, are you part of the solution or part of the problem? Yes, these are heavy questions, but these are heavy times. So focus, please. Focus on what's important, what you want to achieve. Focus on always being proactive instead of reactive. Focus on what lies ahead by taking time to prepare. Prepare for that interview for that performance appraisal, for that meeting or presentation. Train your emotions to live in the moment and your brain to look ahead to the future. Unwelcome surprises come to those who are neither focused nor prepared. Have a backup plan to your backup plan. And of course, remember, life happens when you're making other plans. There's a difference between what you want, what you need, and what's good for you. And that can apply in every facet of your life. So let's talk about that, and let's talk about career. Think about what you need to have for a good work-life balance and for fulfill fulfillment in your career. Now think about what you want, daring to dream, but keeping a flexible outlook. Since I was a small child, as far back as I can remember, I wanted to be an airline pilot. I was in awe of airplanes from the first moment I lay eyes on them, and I wanted to be the person to make it soar. I set my sights on being a pilot and flexibly convinced that's how I would spend my life making a living. I, att I attended the aviation program at PS 127 right down the street and thought the rest of my path to becoming a commercial airline pilot would be automatic. Somewhere along the way, I was guided slightly off course professionally. I didn't know what I didn't know. But I started my career at the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey at the first rung of the ladder. I enjoyed every single rung that came after that. The challenges, the triumphs, the lessons, the failures. But in every instance, I listened to my gut. My instincts were spot on and my mind was open and engorged on aviation from different perspectives, from operations to management, not just from the pilot seat. Fast forward and here I stand before you with a job I did not dream of, but a job that was and is a good fit for me. Aviation director and acting chief operating officer for the, for the greatest transportation agency and airport operator in the world. And today, decades after I started, I'm still learning, still sharpening the saw, still sharpening my skills, right? I'm having a great time learning about the business that, that keeps the region moving and have gained a new found respect as I continue to navigate through new and exciting uh, education in ports, tunnels, bridges, and terminals, in real estate operations, and obviously in our railroad system called PATH. And by the way, I'm also a licensed pilot, which should tell you that your dreams may not, may not come to pass the way you envision them, but you never give up on them. You simply approach them with an open mind, and that open mind always allows for many other opportunities in, where a closed mind will block them out. Are you courageous enough to be accountable for your participation in our culture? Don't you want to add value to society for positive re reform that makes sense not just for yourself, but also for your elders and generations to come? Are you stepping back to look at every single situation with a 360 degree view, whether it's yours firsthand or someone else's that you identify with in the news? Do your due diligence in every scenario. If it resonates with you, don't be opinionated. Choose instead to be educated. Be your leader of progress. Hold yourself to a high standard, always. Have a voice that can be trusted based on facts 
not rhetoric. Your brand is what you stand for, and that is significant beyond what I can say here today. I know some of you have been nodding your heads in agreement, and it's easy to digest what I'm telling you in this happy moment where spirits are high and family is near. Remember this feeling. Remember this message, especially when you're navigating at a time when you feel alone and spirits may not be so high when loved ones are not so near. There will be uncomfortable, awkward moments and experiences, but what you feel in that moment isn't simply panic or anxiety, it's evolution. We are all a work in progress, but remember the operative word is progress. Thank you very much and congratulations to all of the graduates for the class of 2021. And thank you, Godspeed, God be with you, uh, graduates of Vaughan College. Thank you so much, Huntley Lawrence, for that special message for Vaughn graduates. And I think it's just incredible that somebody who lived right here, right, went to PS 127, which is not that far from us, and now runs the largest transportation system in the world. So thank you very much for that inspirational message. We'll now begin the presentation of degrees, beginning with the Associate in Occupational Studies. Mr. Prosha will now present those candidates. <laughs> the names of the degree candidates for associates and occupational studies degree will now appear before us. Candidates from the Aviation Training Institute, please rise. Madam President, these candidates have fulfilled all of the requirements for their degree provided by the curricula of Vaughan College of Aeronautics and Technology. On behalf of the faculty, I recommend they be rewarded or awarded their degree. By the powers vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Vaughan College of Aeronautics and Technology, under the laws of the state of New York, and with the authority granted by the Board of Regents, it is my privilege to confer upon you the degree of Associate in Occupational Studies with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Congratulations to you all. Sorry. We'd now like to ask Sean Zimmerman to come forward and be hooded ceremonially to represent all of the ATI graduates of the class of 2021.
Sorry about that, Sean. <laughs> Dr. Laverne will now present the academic candidates. The names of the candidates for the Associate in Applied Science, Bachelor of Science, and Master's of Science degrees will now appear before us. Candidates, please rise. Madam President, these candidates have fulfilled all of the requirements required as prescribed by the curricula of one College of Aeronautics and Technology. On behalf of the faculty, I recommend that they be awarded their degrees. By the powers vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Vaughn College of Aeronautics and Technology, under the laws of the state of New York, and with the authority granted by the Board of Regents, it is my privilege to confer upon you the degree of Associate in Applied Science, Bachelor of Science, and Master of Science, with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Congratulations to you all. We'd now like to ask Cash to come forward and be hooded ceremonially to represent all of the graduates of the class of 2021. As part of the academic traditions in which we are participating today, I ask that all of our graduates move their tassel from the right to the left, if you have one or symbolically if you don't. Graduates, welcome to the fellowship of those who call themselves college alumni. You are here because you are committed to attaining your degree. You were able to achieve that goal with the support of your faculty, family, and friends. Graduates, I ask that you thank those that you love in the chat and around you who helped you get to this day. More. Join the meeting.
Please continue with messages in the chat as we proceed with the program. We have one final congratulatory message from our New York State Lieutenant Governor, Kathy Hochul. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul. And first of all, my heartfelt congratulations to the class of 2021 and to all the people, your family, your friends, your professors who helped you make it here today. Surely a year ago when the class of 2020 was denied their rite of passage with an in-person graduation, you thought by the time you graduate, the pandemic would be gone and life would be back to normal, right? Well, here we are. Yet despite enduring uncertainty and setbacks for more than a year of COVID, you still met the rigorous academic standards required to earn a diploma from a great New York State institution. But far more than the academics that every class before you and those that follow have to meet, your education, particularly since 2020, has been utterly unique. Each of you are now qualified to teach a master class in adaptability, essential life skills, and resiliency. Not sure? Just hear me out. You are now entering into a world which has been radically altered. Forces beyond our control have changed our economy, our society, and indeed have changed each and every one of us. You are now bonded with others in the class of 2021 across the nation in a shared moment in history that will define a generation. And I guarantee that at your 50th reunion, you'll be talking about what you endured, the sacrifices you made, how you missed your classmates and your professors, how you had the additional hardship of finishing your education through enormous stress. But through it all, missing the final days with your friends and the celebration of graduation, you endured. And it is that endurance, resiliency, and a toughness, coupled with compassion and a newfound appreciation for people in all walks of life, from healthcare workers to grocery store cashiers, to countless fellow citizens who selflessly rose to meet the occasion. All of this has built a foundation for your character that will serve you for as long as you live. You may not feel like it yet, but your experience surviving the global pandemic of 2020-2021 is a rock upon which you will measure all future challenges, setbacks, and whatever life throws your way. Just like the greatest generation who endured and survived the Great Depression and World War II, you and members of your class have the potential to be a generation that is held in esteem and awe for the grit and spirit of determination that got you to this graduation today. These traits will carry you forward into a world of uncertainty, yet one of unlimited possibility. Once you walk across the virtual stage, you'll be entering a whole new era, one where we have far more questions than answers. But as a college educated adult, you will now be called upon to help shape the answers to the burning questions of the day. Like how do we eradicate racial and social injustice? How do we foster more inclusivity for marginalized communities? How will we meet the challenge of climate change? How do we address the future of work and workplaces? How do we solve the healthcare inequities and better prepare for the next viruses that are sure to come? You are needed to help define our post-pandemic world and to answer these questions. Now, our country is turning to you, our next generation, for inspiration and hope as you build your own legacy and strive toward a more just, civil, and inclusive society. So more than just wearing a cap and tassel on your head, you also now wear the weight of these responsibilities on your shoulders. Class of 2021, as the curtain of social distancing and isolation begins to lift, more and more are vaccinated, and we venture out from this period of darkness. Use your newly acquired education as the launch pad to lift off from and soar high. Use your passion and your most recent experiences to help shape our post-pandemic society into one that promotes generosity, love, and kindness. That's exactly what this world needs right now and your fellow New Yorkers are counting on you to help lead the way. Congratulations on this amazing accomplishment.
It helps if I unmute. How perfect is that? We spent the whole year trying to make sure we're unmuted, and I don't unmute. <laughs> <laughs> Distinguished guests, trustees, family, and friends, thank you for your presence here today. To the graduates, a final word. Congratulations, and we look forward to being able to hold a celebration in the future. We were just talking before the ceremony about some dates in the fall, so look for that. We will notify you as soon as we are able to host that event. Today, reflect on all that you have learned. The faculty has provided you with a superb education. Your classmates have taught you the need for teamwork and the value of friendship. Today, you join the prestigious group of people who call themselves Vaughn College alumni. As alumni, we want you to contribute to and be involved in the life of the institution. We look forward to the contributions you will make to the future of not only Vaughn, but also the world. Good luck, good health, and much happiness. Vaughn College's commencement has now ended. Please put the view in gallery mode so that we can all see our wonderful accomplished graduates. Congrats again, and we invite you to flip your physical and virtual caps in celebration. <laughs> Congratulations. 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 Congratulations, Leo. Thank you. Thank you.
Hey, Jolie, congratulations. Congratulations, Jolie. Here you go. Congratulations, Congratulations, Manny. Thank you. Hey, congratulations. We did it. We did it. We did it. Where are you? Tell us something. Get it, friends. Get us right there. Congratulations. Come again. Come on, Prince, get jiggy with it. Get jiggy with it. <laughs> 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 See, that's the problem. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. I was like, it looks a little bit familiar. Congratulations, Nashma! Congratulations! Congratulations, my dear! Congratulations coming from your mom! Congratulations! Six feet, six feet. Congratulations to the from her mom and her grandma! Thank you! Congratulations, Giovanni! Ready. Congratulations, Majma. Thank you. Congratulations, everyone. That's a good place to start. Look up, Mom. Well, what a wonderful ceremony. Nice month. Ceremony, yeah. Celebrate with you. Yeah. All right. All the best. And we want Molly. 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 Thank you, Junior. Thank you, Junior. Thank you, Junior. Thank you, Junior. Thank you, Thank you, Junior. Thank you, Junior.
Oh, I see. We made it. We made it, man. <laughs> we did it. Congratulations, Judith. Brooks in the house. <laughs> Brooks in the house. <laughs> yeah. Hey, y'all. Y'all have a good time. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Hey, 